When you talk about gratitude to somebody who doesn't believe, you know what they say? What kind of God is this? Why does he need to why does he need us to thank him all the time? Why is he so self-obsessed? Why does he want me to thank him? What does he get out of it? You know? Because in this world, when you look at someone who's constantly asking to be praised or asking to be thanked, you say this guy's full of himself. This guy's arrogant. And they, the non-believer asks the same question about God. He says, well, how come this God wants us to thank Him, praise Him, say His most beautiful names? What's that about? Why is He so self-indulged? Ma'adullah. We don't talk like that, but a non-believer does. Non-believer does. Actually, I've heard this question for even youth from Muslim families. You know, what, what, what does God get out of it? These are the kinds of ayat that answer that question. Look, you're going to be here for a little bit and you're going to be gone. وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ The face of your master will remain. You know what part of this ayah answers the question? Allah's names. ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ The possessor of glory and nobility. Ikram is actually different from karama. Karama means nobility itself. Ikram is to give nobility. The, to, to give someone nobility is ikram. Now, Allah says, and by the way, glory is an easy word to understand. In the worldly sense, not in God's sense, not in Allah's sense. In the worldly sense, when is somebody glorified? In the modern world, when is somebody glorified? Nobel Prize, Olympics, an athlete can be glorified. NBA championship, the team can be glorified. The elections, the president can be glorified, the inaugural ceremony. Graduates from a university, the graduates can be glorified. The soldier can be glorified by him ha being handed a medallion or a medal of honor or something like that. These are inst like instances of someone being glorified, right? To be glorified, what must you have? Other than winning something, what, must, what necessary component has to be there? An audience. Somebody there to glorify you. If you're going and you're going you're gonna to say that I, you know, I won the championship and nobody's in the stadium and you're holding the medal by yourself, then you have to make the cheer noises on your own. Woo! <sighs> you know? Nobody there. Now, the question was, why does God need us to glorify Him all the time? Right? And by the way, honoring is the same. To be honored, what must be there? Somebody to honor you. Somebody has to be there to honor you. Allah says in the previous ayah, everybody's dead. Everybody's dead. And the only one remaining is Allah. And He still possesses glory. And He still possesses nobility. For us, glory and nobility cannot exist unless somebody else exists to give it to us. You understand this problem? But for Allah, He says, first of all, you will all be wiped out. And then we'll talk about my glory and nobility. It'll still be there. Dhul Jalali wal Ikram. Subhanallah. Allah is saying, I don't need you to be glorified. I don't need you to be honored. I already own it. And even after you're gone, I'll still own it. It's not, so the question, why does God need us to blah, blah, blah? Why does God command us to blah? Why does He need us to do this? The word need is removed from this picture. God advises us to, for sure. For sure. The beneficiary of that praise is who? Is us. How come? How does it benefit? The, the disbeliever says, how does it, me, it benefit me to praise God? Allah says, first of all, in this surah, did He say you enjoy a bunch of gifts? He, may, he listed a bunch of gifts. Elsewhere in the Qur'an, He furthers this argument and says, وَلَا إِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you were to be grateful even a little bit, I'll increase you even more. I'll give you even more. You enjoying the gifts you have in this earth? You want more of them? What should you do? Be grateful. I will benefit you here and the next life. Just be grateful. So the only beneficiary of gratitude is the human being. That's the only beneficiary. Subhanallah. This is وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Now, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Then what favors are you going to deny? And since you're thinking, Allah, if, if you follow the train of thought, you think I need praise, huh? Well, actually, let's talk about what you need first. Before you talk about what I need, it's like Allah is saying, let's, let's talk about what you need. Look at how the conversation flips. يَسْأَلُهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Everyone in the skies and the earth is asking him constantly. Whose needs are being talked about now? 
SubhanAllah, the previous ayah established Allah's freedom of need. He doesn't need. And now this ayah establishes how needy you and I are. Everyone in the skies and the earth depends on him. Su'al, the word su'al, or sa'ala yas'alu, isn't just for asking, it's also for dependency. That's why the dependent one is also called as sail As sail wal mahroom. Right? وَالَّذِينَ فِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقُّ مَعْلُومِ لِلسَّائِلِ وَالْمَحْرُومِ For the one who asks also means the dependent one. Because he's in a position of not being able to help himself.